Well, welcome to uh, another Sunday Live. It's really uh, great to be here with you again, as always. Uh, and we're in for a bit of a treat today. Now, this Sunday is a special uh, Sunday uh, because we're remembering what we call All Saints uh, Sunday. Uh, and really that just basically means that we just think about Christian saints that have lived in the past and also those who are of course still with us today. But what does that word saint mean? Well, really it basically means someone who is a believer in Jesus Christ and has put their faith in him. In other words, me and everyone uh, that's alive today that class themselves as Christians and those who have lived uh, in the past. Now, of course, many Christians have existed and all have done various different things and, and some we remember more than others because, of course, uh, some have achieved incredible things in the name uh, of the Lord, not in their own strength, always remember uh, in the strength of Jesus Christ. And so that's kind of what we're going to be thinking about uh, today. Uh, we're not going to have a, a particular Bible reading, but we will be thinking about a certain person. Uh, and one of my, I suppose, uh, I suppose you could call New Testament uh, heroes or persons who I really, uh, I suppose, empathise with uh, and associate myself in so many w ways with, and that is the Apostle uh, Peter. So we're going to be uh, thinking about him just for a moment, uh, and then after we're going to have a uh, song uh, which is called uh, Heroes of the Faith, and you've seen that one uh, before. Uh, so we're going to have that one again, lots of actions in it. But before we come to that, as I say, we're going to be thinking about Peter. And uh, I've got this thing from the Kids Club. It's really, really good. Uh, and it's a kind of, I don't think it's a cartoon, but it's, it's aimed at the younger generation anyway. But I think it really does give an overview uh, of the life and times of the Apostle Peter. So before we watch that, let's just dedicate this time to God. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day and we thank you for all the, uh, the saints that have followed you in the past and we just thank you for all those who are faithful today. And so we just pray for your blessing on our time now in your holy name. Amen. So sit back and, and enjoy an overview of the life and times of the Apostle Peter. God's Story Peter So part of God's story is about a guy named Peter and it goes like this. Peter, who was also called Simon, lived in Capernaum, where he worked as a fisherman. One day, Jesus came up and told him to go into deep water to fish. When Peter obeyed Jesus, he caught so many fish that his boat began to sink. Peter fell at Jesus' feet with amazement. Then Jesus said, from now on, you will be catching men. Basically, now that Peter followed Jesus, he could help other people follow Jesus too. After that, Peter and the disciples followed Jesus everywhere. They got to see miracles, hear about the kingdom of heaven, and see what God was like by spending time with his son. Like one night, when the disciples left in a boat ahead of Jesus. Later, Jesus joined them by walking out across the sea. It was dark and stormy, so the disciples thought he was a ghost. Jesus said, it's me. Peter actually stepped out of the boat to go to Jesus which means he walked on top of the water too. But as soon as he saw the waves, he got scared and started to sink. Jesus caught him and said, why did you doubt me? See, he wanted Peter to trust him even when it made no sense. After all, God is powerful and controls everything. When Jesus climbed into the boat, the disciples worshiped him. But some people did not believe Jesus is God's son, even after seeing his miracles or hearing about the amazing things he did. In fact, they got so mad that Jesus said he's God's son that they had him arrested. Well, even though Peter followed Jesus, he wasn't perfect. So when he realized he could get in trouble just for following Jesus, he pretended he didn't even know him. In one night, he told three different people that he didn't know Jesus at all. What's amazing is that Jesus had told Peter he was going to deny him three times. That means Jesus knew Peter would mess up and he loved him anyway. And guess what? Jesus feels the same way about us. He told Peter to keep right on following him, and he did. Peter was there when Jesus was killed, when he came back to life, and when he rose straight up into the sky into heaven. Jesus gave Peter and the other disciples a special message before he left. He said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and everywhere in the world. 
It's actually a message for all Jesus' followers, which means you and me. Anyway, Peter and the others were waiting for the Holy Spirit together in Jerusalem when a sound like wind came from heaven. Flames landed on their heads. Then they were filled with the Holy Spirit who helps us do things we can't do by ourselves. Right away, the Holy Spirit helped them do miracles. More than 3,000 people chose to follow Jesus that day. Peter and the others who believed in Jesus took care of each other and people in need. Every day, new people saw the way they loved each other and chose to follow Jesus and be part of God's family too. And no matter what happened, even when life got hard, the disciples kept following Jesus. And because they bravely told more and more people about Jesus, we get to know about Jesus and follow him today. And that's the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Peter was a fisherman. He followed Jesus. He showed others how to follow Jesus. Peter saw Jesus was God's son. Jesus helped him walk on water. Peter messed up. Jesus loved him anyway. Peter kept following Jesus and sharing him with others. The Holy Spirit came. Lots of people started following Jesus. News of Jesus spread. We can follow him today. And that's a part of God's story.
Well, I do hope uh, you uh, enjoyed uh, that, uh, that little short film uh, about an overview of Peter. And I also hope you enjoyed that song, lots of actions there. But I do love the uh, story of Peter because, you know, sometimes we can think of the apostles as like superhumans. And in some ways, <laughs> I guess you could say that they were because they were the ones that worked with Jesus himself. Uh, and they became like the 12 pillars of the church and were the foundations of everything uh, that we are today. But what I really, really love about Peter is he was just so human as well. You know, like me and like so many of us, he was so quick to put his foot in his mouth. And if you know his story, uh, maybe you know a little bit more now, uh, you will know that that was the case. And that's what I love about him because God hasn't called, you know, super holy people to be followers of his. He's called every single one of us, no matter who you are or, or where you've come from or whatever you have or have not achieved in life, God loves us all and has called us all to become literally uh, saints of the church. Uh, in the, the Bible actually says, even though I'm a vicar and a priest, we are all the priesthood of Christ, the Bible says. Well, I'm getting a little bit worried right now because, uh, uh, as you know, we've had a lot of rain and there's forecast storms. So I've been trying to get to, to record various things in uh, amongst the, the, this weather at the moment. And the wind's picking up at the moment, so I'm worried it might blow this tripod over. So I'm going to bring uh, my thoughts quickly uh, to a conclusion. But don't worry, because we've got something special about to happen uh, in a moment. I interviewed a good friend of mine called uh, Greg who I have known for many, many years. In fact, uh, we got, he got married two weeks before uh, me uh, and Leanne got married to Tina. Uh, and um, so, no, I didn't marry Tina, sorry, he got married to Tina. <laughs> Get it right, anyway. Um, and uh, he's gone on to serve God in, in various ways. And I, I caught up with him a little while ago and we had a, a, a lovely chat uh, and I talked to him about how he uh, became a, a Christian. So really you could say uh, this is Greg's testimony or, or Greg's uh, story. So he's going to share that with us in a moment. Well, we're both going to be in the interview because I'm actually uh, interviewing him. I have quite heavily edited the video so at the end you might find it suddenly jumps um, and I've edited it quite a lot. The reason why I've done that is because it's actually quite long. But at some point, I will put the whole uh, interview up uh, unedited. Well, a little bit edited, but not entirely uh, edited for you to be able to, to watch. Uh, so sit back and, and enjoy learning all about my good old friend, uh, Greg. Well, I've called someone else. Uh, and his name's uh, Greg, and now I, well, me and Greg go back uh, many years, don't we? Uh, Certainly do, Ian. <laughs> and Greg has agreed uh, to tell us his story of how uh, he became a Christian. So thank you ever so much, uh, Greg, for right. agreeing to, to do this uh, for me. Um, and so I do hope you're going to enjoy his story. Um, so people, I know you, but people don't know you who are, who are watching this uh, at the moment. So. Could you just tell us a little bit about yourself, really? Who you are, where you come from, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, no problem, Ian. Uh, yes, I, I'm actually a local guy, um, born and bred in uh, Bournemouth, in the area of Ensbury Park. Uh, I have been around for quite a long time. I've just, I've just, just, uh, I don't know if it's celebrated, it uh, celebrated my 62nd birthday. So, um, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a local guy and uh, spent most of my life in the Bournemouth area. So, what kind of work did you do? Well, uh, when I, I well, I went I went to uh, Winton Boys School there in Coronation Avenue in in Mordan, and having left there, I um, got a uh, an apprenticeship, and I worked for British Gas for the first sixteen years of my working life. Yes, I remember because I, I knew you when you actually were working for British Gas. Yep. I remember that many many years ago. Yes, yeah, yeah, very happy days actually working for British Gas. Yeah, yeah. I remember the van. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Go on. Yes, uh, I had a terrible reputation of um, smashing up gas board vans. Um, they said I had a whole uh, filing cabinet drawer just to myself. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. But I didn't know. But anyway, okay. I'm a lot safer now, though. <laughs> so, so what happened after that then? Well, uh, well, I say I, I worked for I say worked for British Gas for for 16 years, um, and then. Uh, some well actual life-changing uh, events happened um 
first of all, the, the biggest life-changing event was I, that I became a Christian. Yeah. Um, and uh, it wasn't long after that that uh, I had a distinct call on my life to serve the Lord in a full-time capacity. So uh, myself and my wife, Tina, we both left our very well-paid jobs. We were, we were known as, uh, well, sometimes we were described as yuppies, but we're actually... We were actually dinkies, which meant double income, no kids yet. Uh, so we, we gave up our very well-paid jobs and um, stepped out in faith and served the Lord in a full-time capacity, um, joining up with a, an organisation called Open Air Campaigners. Okay, well, thank you. I'm sure you'll share a little bit more about uh, your spiritual journey a bit later on. Yes, most certainly. I, I put you on the spot earlier and asked you uh, about what was your favourite uh, sort of Christian song, and then you get reeled off about, I don't know, three or four <laughs> different songs that you like, but we did come across one uh, that you thought that you wanted to say what the, like us to be, be played. Yes, I mean, there, there are many uh, songs that, uh, that, that's, uh, that are significant in my life, but I guess... Uh, the most significant song in my life was a song called You Lay Aside Your Majesty. Okay, okay. Is, it, is there a particular reason why Well, you... that, was, that was a song that was instrumental in me coming to know the Lord. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, well, which we're going to hear a little bit more about yeah. in a moment. Okay, yeah. um, so we're going to, to listen to this uh, particular song. So um, do you want to introduce it? Well, yes, folks, uh, a, a song, a, funny enough, a song when I first heard it, it was a new song in those days, back in the 1980s. Uh, but yes, it's, uh, yeah, You Laid Aside Your Majesty. I can't even remember who, who wrote it. That's terrible, isn't it? Thank you. Heaven and earth, they 
Well, welcome uh, back. I do hope you enjoyed that piece of music. We really now come to the heart of why we're here, uh, and that is to hear how Greg became a Christian. Uh, so really, Greg, as I said to my mum, the, it, this is your bit now where we really get to learn more about your uh, journey of faith. So it's over to you. Right. So, well, where do I start? Well, first and foremost, um, I was never really particularly interested in, uh, certainly not in Christianity or anything like that. The nearest I came to any type of religious experience was, strangely enough, through martial arts. Um, I was uh, training uh, in uh, a martial art called Shorinji Kempo, uh, which had, uh, yes, a, a definite s spiritual or f um, f background to it. Um, you, had, you, you obviously had the, the physical training, but there was also the, uh, the theology side of it, and that was Zen Buddhism. So that was the nearest I ever got to, to, to any sort of formal religious experience. Yeah. Um, so how did I become a Christian? Well, I say it's a bit of a long story. I'll try to keep it short, but uh, <laughs> um, I was engaged to be married to my now obviously wife, Tina, and everything was you know, being prepared for the upcoming wedding and stuff and everything was going smoothly uh, until such time that my wife herself um, became a Christian uh, through speaking to her, her elder sister. And that's when things start to go slightly pear-shaped um, because obviously my wife being a Christian and me being not being a Christian, uh, there was obviously some kind of conflict. Um, and in actual fact, at one stage, um, the wedding was not going to happen. But uh, God had other ideas on that one. Um, and having had a, a conversation with the minister that was going to marry us, I, I, I thought I'd pretty much smooth things over quite well, actually. Um, I, have a, I, I had a great uh, gift in saying what people wanted to hear in those yeah, days. Yeah, um, that was Mr. Parnaby, wasn't that it? Was, that was their great, great Parnaby, yes. Or well, uh, we used to call him Mr. P. In Mr. Days. P, yeah, <laughs> fantastic man. Um, so yes, yeah, so I thought I'd smooth things over. But uh, some days after that conversation, uh, the church that we were, we were, were attending, I, I was going to church because I wanted to please my wife. Um, uh, yes, they had a, a special thing on a, on a, on a Sunday, uh, once a month on a Sunday, a, a church tea. And it was always a thing to, to, uh, to reach out to people, uh, yeah. uh, you know, and, and to try to explain the Christian faith to people that uh, perhaps had some kind of interest. So, yes, I went along to that uh, with my wife-to-be and my sister, who, uh, who was uh, who recently become a Christian herself. Uh, so I went along to that and, um, you know, again, it was a lovely afternoon, but during the church day, there was a time of, of testimony, uh, you know, people giving their story. And uh, funny enough, Ian, this is where you come into it. <laughs> Do I? All right, okay. Well, you and Leanne, yes, yeah, so you were very instrumental uh, yeah. in me becoming a Christian in many ways. And yes, and uh, you were the young couple that uh, were being interviewed at the time. Um, and uh, the one question that, that was asked... That was just last year, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> if, if only. If only yeah, I know we look young enough yeah, to be right, that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. uh, yes, and one question that was asked uh, to Leanne, actually, uh, and the question that was asked was, um, uh, Leanne, um, would, you, would you marry uh, Ian if he wasn't a Christian? And, of course, she looked up and said, no. And I'm sat there thinking, oh, that's all I needed to hear. And uh, yeah, I thought, oh boy, that's it really now. Because obviously I still wasn't a Christian that time. But anyway, we went into that church service that evening after the church tea, me feeling pretty awful about, about what I just heard. And anyway, we went through, we sat down there and we, you know, did the usual thing that, that, that happens in church services, uh, you know, sang some hymns and and, and so on and so forth. And I remember the the speaker that 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 that, e that particular evening um, invited his uh, three young sons to come up to teach us a new song. Oh, okay. <laughs> and of course, the new song uh, was "You Laid Aside Your Majesty." And uh, I stood up. I mean, because I like I, I I've always liked singing, and I uh, got up to start singing this this new song that had been just been taught to us. And as we were singing it, suddenly the the, the words. Um, became very, very real to me. You know, uh, uh, you've already heard the song, so you know what the words are. And 
Uh, and at the time, I, I got to admit, I didn't know what was happening because I didn't know anything about, uh, about Christianity as such. Uh, uh, I, just, I just broke down uh, and wept. Now, I always described myself as being a sort of bit of a macho sort of guy, you know. You were, you are, you're Kung Fu and all that, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the martial arts and, and the marathon running and yes. all the stuff that I, that, that I was involved yes. in. Um, uh, you know, and for me to, to show any type of emotion, it just wasn't me, you know. Uh, I come from that sort of that background, the, the, dare I say, the stiff upper lip sort of thing. And there, Jolly good. <laughs> yeah, oh yes. And there, there, are, there are, I was in this church full of people, there were probably about 200 or more people in that church that, in that, that particular time. And there I was, well, I had to sit down, because uh, if I hadn't sat down, I would have fallen down. And there I was, this, this, this wreck of a person, sat there blubbering my eyes out. And the thing that I, 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 I felt at the time was this incredible, intense heat within my physical being. Right. And it was, it, was, it was just as if, if all, the, all the rubbish and all the barriers to, to believing in, in, a, in, a, in a real God and, 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 and his son was all being burnt up and, and consumed and, 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 and taken away. Um, I, never did hear the, I never did hear the sermon which came after that. I, I think it might have been something to do with David and Goliath or, or something like that. I can't remember to this day. Um, because I was just in a, I was just just in a state. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, so anyway, the the, the 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 service ended, and and I'm there, you know, still sort of trying to get, pull myself together. Uh, I had my sister on one side, and 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 Tina, my wife, to be on the other side, and they were pretty, they were quite excited because they actually knew what was happening to me. Um, and of course, Ian, you were sat behind me. Oh, it was, wasn't I? I remember it. And this is it. This is the, this is the great thing. I, I eventually pulled myself together, feeling somewhat embarrassed at the time. And, uh, and I thought and people were chatting and everything. And, uh, and I, so I just turned around and you were there. And the words that came out of your mouth was, Greg, how long have you been a Christian? <laughs> and I glanced up at the clock at the back of the wall and I said, about 10 minutes here. <laughs> so, you know, I, I do remember that very clearly because I knew that you'd become a Christian at that moment. Because yeah. I could see your shoulders shaking. <laughs> and I thought, like, oh, yeah, really, he's become a Christian. Yeah, How was... am I going to ask him? And so I, that's the only thing I could think of at that moment. Well, God inspired. <laughs> um, and, and that was it. You see, because it's different for everybody. Everybody comes to Christ in many different ways. For me, it had to be that way because, yeah, I was a, a quite cynical and sceptical about about dare I say what would be described as as organized religion uh, and and, the, and obviously God knew that and he had to do something quite dramatic uh, to show me that, that that he 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 is real um, and I guess I now describe that now knowing a little bit more about about the Lord just a little bit more not much um, uh, a Damascus Road experience yeah you know, like the Apostle Paul on Damascus Road he had to have something really to Oh, smack in the face, really, yeah. um, and that's that's what happened to me. So that was it, and I I remember that that, that evening still well, walking 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 down the aisle out, out towards the, the, the again the uh, the hall the rear hall, and it was like I was floating on 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 cloud nine. It was it was it was quite amazing. And it, the thing is, there was an absolute dramatic change in me from that moment in time i have to say i did notice i mean i knew i knew greg a little bit before uh and uh, i did notice uh, very quickly how changed you were mm. uh so uh and then of course uh you got involved with with myself going out on street corners and preaching and everything <laughs> oh well absolutely yes i <laughs> yes i mean to say one of the one of the just go back to the, one of the, the the immediate changes uh to me was um uh, i had a quite a colourful language, uh, uh, let's say, um, won't go into detail. That was, that was cleared up. My, yeah. my, uh, you know, my, my language was, that was it. God dealt with that. Um, uh, again, uh, again, never really interested in the Bible, uh, but uh, from that moment on, I, I, I couldn't put it down really. No, no. I, used to, I used to go to work, you know, I had to go to work the next day and face uh, the guy that I worked with, um, having had lots of discussions about the stupidity of Christianity, I had to go in the next day and say, by the way, Bob, I've got this to tell you, I've just become a Christian. Yeah. 
Uh, that's brilliant. <laughs> I feel like humble pie, is there? Really? Oh, my, my gosh. Oh, my God has got a great sense of humour. And, and over the years, God has took me to certain places uh, and uh, just showed me how absolutely stupid I've been. Um, yeah. But yes, yes, I, yes. it wasn't long after that, got involved with, uh, with yourself. And uh, uh, another, I used to call you the angry young men. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> well, because well, yes, because we went out. We used to we used to preach out on the streets, didn't we? And we used to we used to give it some. We did, didn't we? Yeah. Well, thank you ever so much, uh, Greg, for sharing your story. Uh, and so that brings our time to a conclusion. Until next time. Well, I do hope uh, you enjoyed hearing uh, Greg's story of of faith and how he came uh, to know the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord. Uh, and saviour and as I say we I did edit it so uh, if you want to see the full version I'll put that up uh, hopefully in the next uh, few days uh, or so. In a moment we're going to come uh, to a very short time of prayer um, but before we do that I just want to show uh, a video clip uh, from what's called the Barnabas uh, Fund. Some of you may have heard of them uh, they're a Christian charity uh, and their main thing is supporting the persecuted, get that word out, persecuted church uh, throughout uh, the world. And there's a, a short video clip going to follow uh, in a moment, uh, which really explains all about them. And you may feel after watching that particular video clip, you might not want to support them. The only thing I want to say uh, is actually um, that it was recorded in 2019. So, of course, since then we've had uh, COVID. So it's a little bit dated. But after watching the video clip, if you feel you want to support uh, Christians throughout the world, that's Christian saints, you know, throughout the world today who are being persecuted for their faith uh, then uh, please uh, please do so so uh, as I always say sit back uh, and enjoy and watch this very short uh, clip and then we're going to come to a time of prayer Galatians states therefore as we have opportunity let us do good to all people especially to those who belong to the family of believers over the past 25 years Barnabas Fund has committed to serving the persecuted church and championing the rights of suffering Christians worldwide, ensuring that critical aid and resources are delivered from Christians, through Christians, to Christians, helping those who face discrimination, persecution, and oppression for their faith in Jesus Christ. Barnabas Fund's mission is to provide practical and spiritual aid to those who need it the most, and we provide this in many forms. Our leadership training is raising up the next generation of leaders, equipping and engaging them in the cause of Christ. Barnabas Fund is constructing new church buildings to provide Christians with dedicated places of worship. We also provide care and support to those who've converted from Islam and other religions. In situations of natural disaster, we work through local partners to act quickly, getting vital aid and help to those Christians who need it the most. We seek to help victims of violence rebuild their lives and stand strong in their faith in often difficult circumstances. In the past year, Barnabas Fund has carried out feeding programmes that have helped more than 70,000 people in 14 countries. We've equipped over 15,000 pastors and evangelists in 23 countries to preach the word of God in often dangerous situations and over 14,000 children in 12 countries have been sponsored to be supported in their education. These are only a few ways Barbara's Fund is building, equipping and supporting the persecuted church around the world. Religious freedom is a growing concern in the UK. Barnabas Fund is taking a stand against the gradual erosion of religious freedoms. These include the freedom to read scripture in public, the freedom to live out your faith in public by wearing a small cross to work or simply by openly sharing your Christian faith with others. The Our Religious Freedom campaign is a Barnabas Fund petition that has received over 90,000 signatures and we are committed to raising the awareness to the growing erosion of religious freedoms. By taking up a free subscription to Barnabas Aid magazine, you can learn about the pressures and challenges faced by those Christians persecuted around the world. We are committed to the global persecuted church. We are here to stand up for religious freedoms. We are Barnabas Fund.
So let's uh, come to a time of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Father, Father, we do thank you for such organisation as the Barnabas uh, Fund, and we thank you, Lord, for all that they seek to do uh, for Christians throughout the world, even here uh, in the United Kingdom. So often, Lord, particularly living in this country, we can forget that there are other Christians throughout our world today who are being persecuted for simply just wanting to go to church on Sunday or because they profess a faith in you or they just seek to just want to read uh, their Bible every day. And so we just offer these people throughout the world today who are suffering because they are just simply Christians that we will be able to support them, whether it be financially, but also, Lord, most importantly, we pray that your Holy Spirit might move amongst these people. Give them the strength and the courage that they need to keep going and to put their faith in you. We pray for these, uh, these amazing heroes uh, of faith, Lord. We just pray that they uh, will have a real sense of your Holy Spirit upon them, that you are there with them, guiding them and strengthening them. Amen. But also, Lord, we come and think about our own country right now and, well, countries throughout the entire world because of COVID. Oh, Lord, there is so much fear and anxiety in our world today. And I just want to pray, first and foremost, for our own government right now, Lord, that you will give them the wisdom uh, 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 to know uh, the right things to do. We do particularly pray for scientists right now, Lord. It's, it's good to hear that they're making incredible um, uh, progress with vaccines and so on. And we just pray, Lord, that this might be able to be rolled out uh, as quickly as possible so that life can begin to return to some normality. But we do particularly pray for those who are isolating or are feeling low or are feeling uh, depressed. Oh Lord, we're being told again and again that anxiety and that depression, mental illness is on the increase. And so, Father, I just pray for anyone right now who's listening uh, to me. I just pray, Father God, that right now that you will reach out to them by the power of your Holy Spirit. That you will make them realise that you love them and that you are with them uh, right now. And so, gracious Father, I just want to pray uh, for your blessing then from all the people who have been watching uh, Sunday Live today, that they will know that you are with them day by day. And so, Father God, we offer these prayers to you now in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, the rain is beginning uh, to come uh, upon us, uh, and so we do have uh, one more song uh, to actually listen uh, to, and I've actually forgotten the name of it, and I've got a piece of paper somewhere. What have I done with my piece of paper? I don't know. I've lost my... This is what you do uh, happens when you record in the woods, doesn't it? You lose your piece of paper. Well, okay, try and find it. I want to be littering everything. But anyway, we're going to be uh, listening uh, to another song, <laughs> and I can't remember what it's called, but I know it's a really good song. Uh, so let's enjoy that now.
say He is mighty to say Forever Author of salvation Heroes and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the That was mighty to save. I found my piece of paper. It was actually in my pocket all the time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that piece of uh, piece of music. Uh, it is beginning to rain quite heavily, uh, so I'm going to start to try and walk a little bit faster uh, and head back uh, to the car uh, and finish my walk with my dogs. But I do hope that you've enjoyed uh, Sunday uh, Live uh, this Sunday. Next Sunday, uh, it's Remembrance Sunday, so. Uh, I'm guessing that some of the theme uh, of uh, Sunday Live will be uh, to reflect, uh, you know, remembering those who have fought for our, our country and given their lives. Well, as I say, our time has now come to an end, so may God's love and blessing be upon you all now and always. Amen. And as we always say in church, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And as always, all the bits will follow after. I finish now. Amen. Our church's ministry and mission has never been more needed. Meeting online or in church for prayer services, fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity and we are so grateful for all the gifts we receive. This generosity is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. If you're able to give to us now, here's how you can help. 